Hey guys, um, this is John. In today's video, we're going to talk about how we get from this formula here down to this formula, okay? So, a problem that I have noticed, like, well, I actually had this problem as well, is when I first started um, learning about Mat 241, I was kind of confused how we isolated the coefficient b of n, right? And I really do agree that this can be really confusing if you have never seen this before, and this is most likely the first time you're seeing this, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you guys my technique of how I show students how we get from the coefficient b and isolate it appropriately, okay? So this topic is quite important because I've seen previous exam questions that really focus on the idea of orthogonality and being able to understand it and in its details can really help you out throughout the rest of this course because these sort of formulas are going to appear for much every single chapter from here on out so it's probably a good idea to get a sense of what is happening right now okay so the goal here is to isolate the coefficient b of n okay so what we're going to do is we're going to first multiply both sides by sine i'll write this in a different color actually um, sine m pi x over l equals same summation m pi x over l times sine m pi x over l. Okay. So remember that n and m are integers, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to expand the right-hand side of my equation down here. Okay, So I'm going to expand it out just a few terms. 1 pi x over L times, I'll just keep writing in blue, times sine m pi x over L plus b2 sine 2 pi x over L, m pi x over L, plus dot 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 dot, okay. So the concept of orthogonality can basically be attributed to this multiplication right here, right? To this multiplication right here sorry so what we're going to do is go to this little formulate relationship right here so the claim is that if you take the integral of two sine functions multiplied by each other with different m and l well for m for some integer m and n right this is going to evaluate to two different things so for when n it does not equal m, this integral evaluates as zero. And when n is equal to m, it's going to be one half the interval that we're integrating over. So in this case, since the length of the interval we're integrating over is l, it's going to be l over two. And this is pretty much the formula that defines what we're doing right now. Okay, so in order to apply this formula, now we have to take the integral of both sides over the entire length. copy and paste this down it's quite literally the same thing equals integral 0 to L of all these terms as well okay and what we notice here right is that each of these integrals can be divided up into their individual pieces, right? So hopefully you guys remember this from earlier math courses. Right? And going by this formula now, right? What we notice is that we have the same exact relationship happening for each of these integrals, okay? 
So for the cases where m is specifically equal to the n, right? So for this integral right here, for m equals 1, that means n is equal to m. Therefore, our integral is equal to l over 2. However, for m does not equal 1, so n does not equal m, this integral evaluates to 0, right? So consequently, we can think of this random m we're multiplying by by another summation, right? So earlier up here, we essentially just multiply both sides by um, some random sign of m, right? But in actuality, we're multiplying each, each summation of sign of these n's by another summation of m's. And what we're doing was we're iterating against every possible case of m against sine of n. So think about what I just said very carefully in terms of this line right here, okay? What I like to say is that we are looking for the surviving terms. And I think the difficulty in seeing this, this exact principle, can be found in the fact that we're using an arbitrary initial condition right now. But let's go ahead and let's call f of x is equal to, say, 5 sine of 3 pi x over l. So bear with me, and hopefully this will bring light to what's going on right now. Okay, So this means that in this line right here, so if f of x is equal to that thing I just called right there, then we can just directly substitute it in. This is not the trick question right here. So now, now what you see is that imagine iterating, okay? Imagine iterating for all m's. Which terms on the right hand side are non zero, okay? So let's take a look at this, right? So we know that on the left hand side, on the left hand side right here, okay, if we imagine imagine iterating across for all m's, we see that for m equal to 3, so n equals m, our integral evaluates to l over 2. But when m does not equal 3, for n does not equal m, our integral evaluates to 0. Right. If one hand side of the equation is equal to zero and the other side is not, then we have a trivial solution in our constant. Right. So let's take a look at that. What I just said right there. Okay. So let's take a look at the case for m is equal to one. Right. So if m equals one, the left hand side of our equation is equal to zero, as I just showed there. However, on the right hand side of our equation, okay the only term that is non-zero is the term for b1 integral 0 l sine 1 pi x over l sine 1 pi x over l this is the n and this is the n right and then this tells us that the integral value is l over 2 but we're equal to 0 l over 2 cannot be 0 right can't be 0. Therefore, b1 must be equal to 0. Okay, So this tells us that 0 is equal to 0, which is literally the trivial solution. It doesn't help us very much here. Okay. However, let's take a look at the iterator series for m equals 3. Right? On the left-hand side of our equation, at, L, at m equals 3, we evaluate to l over 2 now. So 5l over 2 is equal to something on the right-hand side. So now let's think about this, right? So remember that we have an infinite series here, okay? So there is a sine 3 pi x over l term. So b3, right, so the third term of the series, 0l sine 
3 pi x over L times sine 3 pi x over L. Remember, these are the m terms, and these are the n terms. Right? So what does this evaluate to? Since m is equal to n here, our, inter our integral is going to be evaluated to one half of the path, the, the length. Right? So this tells us that b3 times l over 2 is equal to l over 2 times 5. And these two cancel out. So this means that b3 is just simply equal to 5. Right? All the other terms, all the other coefficients, so b1, b2, and all b n does not equal m, are 0, as proven by this specific case right here. However, for m is equal to 3, so for when n, for when n equals to m, our coefficient is non-zero. Okay? So this also comes down to the point of coefficient matching that I like to bring up a lot. So if we notice here, right, our b3 equals 5 is just quite literally the constant coefficient in front of our sine term right here. And when you're applying your initial condition, with some practice, you guys should notice a pattern that you can simply coefficient match your fives right here. Right? Okay, so now let's go back and take a look at the general case. So f of x could be anything, right? So if we go back up to here and take a look at this specific part. Right? So remember just in the example above where f of x was equal to 5 sine 3 pi x over L? When n was equal to m, our b of n is non-zero, right? So if we think about this carefully here, in order for b of n to be non-zero, n has to be equal to m, right? So for individual coefficient terms, so if we're specifically trying to find this coefficient term right here, right? So this tells us here that for this specific relationship, So we're specifically looking at the n equals 1 case here. For n equals 1, right, the only term that survives here for where, where the coefficient here is non-zero, for non-zero coefficient, m has to be equal to n, all equal to 1. Right? So for B1, we're going to be equal to 0 over L times this at 1 over 0 over L sine 1 pi x over L times sine 1 pi x over L. Okay? So similarly, if we look at this for n equals 2, pretty much all this stays the same. Except we're looking at n equals 2, right? So in this case, b2 is just going to look like this. Just about, right? b2 looks very similar to b1, except we're integrating a little bit differently this time. What's the difference here? It's just a very minute difference for arbitrary f of x's, right? If we generalize this now for any n, b of n can generally be written as the integral is 0 to L f of x times sine n pi x over L over 0 to L sine 
n pi x over l sine m pi x over l, right? And for non-zero, bn, m equals n. And this goes along with the theme that I was showing earlier, and this is how you essentially get from this point to this point. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns, and I hope this clears up any confusion with the orthogonality principle. Because honestly, this was one of the most confusing things about Matthew 41 until I saw the specific example by iterating out each of the cases. Um,